A huge thanks to Cricut for sponsoring a portion of today's video. Hey friends, it's Simon Hurley and welcome to another video. Now the fall season is officially upon us. One of my favorite times of the year when the leaves start changing, the weather gets a little bit colder, and we can finally pull out the cool fall outfits. And of course, the card making is pretty fun for the season as well. So if you're in it for the spooky Halloween vibes or the more fall Thanksgiving vibes, I got a little bit of all of it for today's video. All the supplies that I use in today's video are listed and linked down below, and use those links helps support me so I really appreciate it. Now stick along as we craft together and create some fall projects. So jumping into this first card, I'm going to use the sticky mat inside of the stamp wheel just to do a little bit of ink blending and I want my cardstock to be nice and held down and not move at all. It's totally not necessary for this, but it makes it a little bit easier to not get ink all of your fingers because you have something to hold on to and your cardstock is nice and stuck down. So I wanna create kind of a spooky purple background with tons of depth and dimension. So I'm starting off with a little bit of Crown Me ink and a large alternate blending tool. I'm going to ink this up and I'll just apply a light layer of Simon Hurley ink all over my Stark White cardstock. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be super smooth. I'm just keeping a light hand though and a light pressure because I want the color to be nice and light in the center of the cardstock where we're starting out. That's also the reason why I chose a blending brush to start out with because this gives me the lightest coverage of ink without really putting much effort into it. You of course could layer it up to get more of a darker color, but generally this blending brush starts out a lot lighter than other things like a sponge would. And now I'm going to move into using one of the Ranger Dome Foam blending tools. I'll go back in with that Crown Me ink again, and this time I'm going to bring it around the edges and bring it in slightly darker than before. Now this is still the exact same color, but I'm just using a lot more pressure and layering up the color a little bit more. And also the tool does make a difference too. With these Dome Foam blending tools, it's a little bit easier to apply more of a heavy hand of ink right at first. Whereas the brushes take a little bit of layering to get to that same desired result. Now with translucent dye ink pads like this, whenever you layer them on top of each other, the more layers that you add, the darker of a color you're going to get. So I really like that you can use just one color and get many different effects with it. And I'm gonna leave that center nice and light. But now I'm gonna go in with Shady, which is this dark gray, almost black color. And this is kind of a life hack. I'm obsessed with this color for darkening up other colors. So that's about as dark as the purple crown me will get. But because that color is so dark, now we can introduce a color like Shady, where it's a super dark gray, and bring that in around the edge, which is going to darken it up even more than that purple did. It gives you a super rich and intense saturated color. I mean, check that out way darker than we were able to achieve with the Crown Me color, and it adds tons of depth and drama to the card. And the cool part about this is even though it's a blackish gray, because we've applied so much purple beneath it, it's going to kind of blend into that color and layer on top of each other to take on some of the properties of that purple color and look like just a darker version of that purple. And if it's looking a little too gray and you wanna kind of bring it back a little bit to the purple, you can always go back in with that same purple color and layer it back over top of that gray to bring in some more properties of that purple and make sure that it's blending together beautifully. All right, now we'll gently go in and peel this off the background. You can see why I didn't want to kind of hold it with my fingers because you'd get a lot of ink because there was tons of saturated color down onto this cardstock but check out how beautiful that background is. You can do this with any sort of tones of ink to create a really beautiful background that has tons of depth and drama to it. And this purple is great for Halloween or fall cards for sure. Now, once I'm done using the stamp wheel, I'm gonna go in just using a little bit of water and clean off any of the excess ink. And then I'll use a lint-free cloth or paper towel to wipe off the surface of my sticky mat. And then once all the water is evaporated from the surface, it stays nice and sticky for the next time you wanna use it. Now let's add a little bit of depth and dimension to this background. And to do so, I'm gonna go in using the Splatter Simon Hurley Create Background Stamp. And this one sort of reminded me of almost like spider webs or like kind of smoke in the distance. So I thought it would be cool to use on this kind of spooky purple backdrop. So I'm going to flip this face up on my work surface and I'm going to bring in my water bottle and just spray a couple of spritzes down onto here. I just like to make sure there's little droplets all over the surface and then it's nice and covered. It should look a little something like this. Then I'll take my inked background, I'm going to place it right down onto the surface on my stamp and just gently make contact all over the surface to make sure that this whole stamp design is going to transfer. I'll leave it there for just a second and then we can lift it off. And check that out, it's already reacting with that ink and it sort of bleaches the ink there. The inks are water reactive, so when they hit water like that, they're going to instantly lighten and create a really cool lighter effect. 
And of course, wherever the ink is lighter, it's going to lift more. And wherever it's darker, it's not gonna lift as much. So it still keeps that really beautiful blended effect and ombre of color on the surface. To stop the design from kind of spreading and bleeding out, I'm going to go in with the heated craft tool and just heat set this nice and quickly. And you can also see that as you heat it, the bleach design sort of intensifies and you really see it start to lighten up that stamped image even more. All right, now I love how this looks, but I wanna add even more layering here. I feel like a little mixed media artist here. And for this, I just wanna add a little more stamping into the background. I'm gonna use the handwritten background stamp, which just has little handwritten kind of scribbled writing across the surface. It looks nice and elegant, but you can't really read necessarily what it says. It's really great for textures though. So I'll just go back in here with a little bit of Crown Me ink, and I'm just going to kind of swipe my ink pad on the surface here. I'm not tapping to get a ton of ink. This swiping method will get you kind of a random amount of ink on the surface and it's not gonna to be totally perfect. And then I'm going to also take it and just kind of bend it so that we don't get the whole stamped impression. And then I'm going to stamp it in different areas, giving pressure to only certain areas of the stamp. And then you'll see that some of it transfers nicely onto the surface there and gives you a really great look, but there's no harsh edges because we bent the stamp instead of just stamping the edge. Then we'll go back in and get up just a little bit more and we'll stamp down a little bit in this corner. I'll also go in with a little bit of shady too, which is that darker color, ink up a little bit more and stamp down in some of those areas so you can see it a little bit better. And having two different tones is fun, one that kind of blends in more and then some that stands out a little bit more. And my ink's super easy to clean off, so I'll just go in and spray it with some water and clean it off with a microfiber cloth. All right, now am I pushing it with the layers? Maybe, but I think I'll take the risk here. I'm gonna go in with the polka dot assortment stencil. And I love this one because it has four different layers of polka dots in it that you can layer up for kind of a 3D polka dot effect, but you can also use any of them separately on your cards. I'm gonna use the second to largest polka dot stencil right here. I think this one's gonna be great. I'll lay it right down onto my card. And I wanna go in using the Astro Paste in the Crown Me color, which is going to give us a really cool kind of tone on tone purple look on the background. So for this, I just want a super Super thin effect. So I'm just gonna go in with my finger and what's really cool about the Astro Paste is you don't wanna kinda of spread it around. You can go in with your finger and just kind of tap it and that's gonna give you the glittery result without a ton of dimension and without all of the dry time. So I'll just go in and tap a little bit through this stencil and it'll also help me kind of blend it out into the edges of the design. And I'm gonna lift it off. Check that out, super cool. Just another little layer that we've added but it kind of blends into the background because it's still that purple color. We'll move it over to this area, tap a little bit more onto my finger, and start tapping it onto the surface of the card. And again, just lightly blend it out into that background. And then third, we'll add it right up here. So move that stencil, and then start tapping it into this corner up at the top. To clean off the stencil, you'll just spray it down, and we're going to go in and wipe this right off the stencil, and that glitter cleans up pretty easily. And that paste goes from kind of a cloudy look while it's wet to a completely transparent look, and it really shows off the glitter once it's dry, but you can see it becomes more transparent and kind of blends in until you tilt it in the light, and then you see those really great dots in the background. Such cool layers in this background with that splatter stamp, then you have the text stamps, and then this really great kind of glittery dots in the background. And the best part, is that none of that glitter comes off in your fingers. Once you're all done, it's completely stuck onto that surface, which is awesome because I hate when glitter is a mess or when it gets all over your recipient and the Astro Pastes don't do that. Now I wanna trim this background down, but I wanna give it kind of a unique look. So I'm going in with my Tim Holtz Antonic Deckle Trimmer, which is going to give me a deckled edge and it's really easy to cut nice and straight. Now inside of this paper trimmer, this top edge is going to give me kind of a smaller deckle and this bottom edge is going to give me more of kind of the deckle design that you're looking for. So it really depends on what you want when you use the trimmer. I'm gonna go into the bottom edge because I want a little bit more of a dramatic deckle look to it. So I'll line up my cardstock and trim it down. And I mean, check out how cool that deckle edge is. It looks ripped and that texture is completely awesome. And I'll repeat that step on all four sides. And then we'll line this up and adhere it down to a top folding A2 size stark white card base. 
And when you adhere this dark background down to that white colored cardstock, you can really see the amazing contrast and that great deckle edge all the way around the card. It looks so cool. And I like that the deckle edge of this trimmer isn't like those deckle scissors. It's a little bit more rough and jagged and it's not perfect all the way throughout, which I think is so cool. It looks more like a perfect ripped edge, which is awesome. Now for the focal point on this card, we're going into one of my favorite fall and Halloween stamp sets that I've released called Fall Sampler, which has some really great pumpkins, a ghost, and two bats that we're going to use on today's cards. And all these images have kind of a floral rhino cut look to them, which is really cool and unique. So we'll peel out these cute little bats and the inserts that stamp out the colored parts of their wings. So for the solid bat images, I'm gonna go in using a little bit of Versafine Claire Nocturne ink, which is a really great juicy black ink pad, and it's going to give me a super solid stamped result with these really adorable bats. So we're going to stamp that down. So it still gives you all of those little floral dots and details in there. Then for the floral inserts, I'm gonna go in with my Simon Hurley ink in the color Roar, which is this really great bright orange color. Line it right up over top of those designs and stamp it into the wings. And you can see that bright orange color is gorgeous and it really contrasts nicely with the dark jet black. And we'll do the same thing for the other wings, ink it up with my Roar color and stamp it right down inside of those wings. Perfect. That's adorable. Now there is a coordinating fall sampler die set in here and I'm going to pull out the two bats from that set to easily cut this out. And all you need to do is just line this right over top of the image, leaving a little bit of a white border all the way around. And then we're going to tape it down using a little bit of mint tape to hold it in place while we run it through our die cutting machine. Then we'll place this right in our die cutting machine, place the top cutting plate on and quickly run it through to cut it out and we'll awkwardly stare at each other as we run this right through our die cutting machine. This awkward die cutting wasn't awkward at all. Did I just wink at you guys? <laughs> all right, back to business, because this is very serious. I'm going to pop these little bats out and you can see they cut out perfectly with a little white border all the way around the image. I wanna make these guys look like they're flying on my card, so I'm going to kind of adhere them at different angles going in opposite directions towards the center of our card. And then for the sentiment, I wanna use the pun from the set that says, you're fantastic. And I wanna heat emboss this on black cardstock using white embossing powder. So I'll go in using my anti-static powder tool to make sure no powder sticks where we don't want it to. Then I'll ink up my sentiment using a little bit of Versamark clear sticky ink and I'll stamp it right down onto my black cardstock. Then we'll go into our white heat embossing powder and sprinkle that right over top of the sentiment. Tap off any of the excess. And I find lightly blowing on it also helps get rid of any of the excess embossing powder before we heat emboss. And then we'll go in and heat set this until it's nice and bright white. And I'll adhere them down on some foam tape. Then to finish it off, I'm going to add my sentiment on some foam tape. And there we have our finished card. I absolutely love that deep and intense purple background that we created with a ton of different layers. Bleaching the ink and then stamping a layer and adding a little bit of astro paste for some sparkle and shine was a really cool way to bring that background to life. And then of course, finishing it off with those spooky little bats from the fall sampler. I love that they're not too spooky. They're so really cute and unique with those great orange florals that are inside of the wings. I can't wait to give this card out to some of my Halloween loving friends. I think they're going to absolutely adore Adore it. All right, now let's move into the next project. And this portion of the video is kindly sponsored by Cricut. So today I'm going to be creating a card for my best friend. Her name is Ale. She's been on the channel before. So if you've seen that video, we had a ton of fun making cards together. And it's actually Ale's birthday this weekend. She turns 22, which is super exciting. And she loves all things fall and kind of nature and outdoors. We actually just recently had a little fall night where we made like pumpkin bread and watched some fall movies. That's how much she loves the fall. The seasons have barely changed over and we're already kind of celebrating and embracing the vibes. So I think this card is going to be perfect for her. And I love that with the Cricut, I can make any patterns and customize and tailor any card or project to the exact person that I'm giving to. It makes it really special. So let's first get into Cricut Design Space here. I looked up fall cards and I found this card that I absolutely loved. It has some cutout elements in it, as well as some pen or drawn elements, which I think is really fun. Now for the card base of this project, I wanna use a craft colored or tan color colored piece of cardstock. And so I'm gonna go into the cutaway cards from Cricut. This one is the Marina Sampler Pack. It has a bunch of really great different blue colors for the card base, but you also have a really nice tan color in here that I'm going to use for the card base. This just screams fall to me. 
And inside of this pack, there's also the inserts that are kind of this really beautiful holographic blue cardstock, which isn't gonna go with my project today, but I really love the color of it. And then of course there's envelopes in here as well, so everything you need to create your card projects. And because the card base size that we're using is four and one fourth by five and a half inches, I'm going to go into the finished size and select an R20, which is that size in the Cricut card world. Then I'll click make it. We can click customize and we're gonna make a couple adjustments to this pattern. So in the layers tab over here, this kind of drawing section is actually set to foil. So if you have the foil pen for your Cricut, you can totally do that and get a really great foiled result. But today I wanna to do that with a pen and get more of a hand-drawn look. So I'm gonna to go to the operation up here and I'm going to click pen and that's just going to draw those lines instead of foil them. So it's really easy to edit the design like that. I'm gonna be making this with the Cricut Joy Extra Card Mat, which allows me to cut on my card base, but only cut on the front half and not the back, which is really nice. So I'm going to pull off the protective layer, and this reveals the nice sticky card mat that we're going to use. So all we need to do is open our card up and lift up this center plastic piece here where that mat is. That will allow us to tuck the back of the card base right underneath that cutting mat. And we'll slide it in fully and then place this right down on top and stick it nicely down onto the card mat. That looks great. It's nice and stuck down and ready to be put through the Cricut Joy Extra. And now we'll click make. Then I'll click on card mat because we're using the Cricut Joy Extra card mat and press confirm. Then I'll go in and select the heavy card stock setting and it's telling us to move the star wheels off to the side. So we're gonna move them out of the way for safety so they don't keep running over the cardstock on the mat. And that looks perfect. They should be out of the way of the card mat now. Then it says to load in the tools and materials. And for this first layer, we're going to do the pen. So to put the pen in, we're just going to unclamp this. We will remove the blade out of here. And then we'll go in and add the fine point 0.4 pen. I'm gonna use the pen in brown because I want it to be kind of a tone on tone look. And this will just be slightly darker than that tan color. So all we're gonna do is uncap it, drop it right into there, and then we'll clamp it back up. And then next, we'll just go in and load our Cricut Joy Extra mat right into the machine, making sure it's nice and centered as we load it up. All right, and once that's all ready, we'll click go. And now it's going to start drawing out all the designs that are on that layer to be drawn. And this part is so cool. We can just sit back, relax, and watch our art come to life in real time. It's super quick when it happens. You can see it drawing out all of these details, and I would never be able to hand draw all of this. So I think it's so cool that you could do it with the Cricut. And I'm really loving how that dark brown color looks on top of the tan card stock. I think Ayla is gonna love this design. All right, now it's saying to set up for the next step, which means we unclamp this fine point marker and then cap it right back up after you're done. And then we'll go right in with the blade and we're just going to drop that right back into the cartridge there and clamp it back in. And then we can press go and now it's preparing and it's going to start up for the cut layer. And check out how well and quickly it's cutting out all of these detailed areas on the card. It's really doing such an amazing job at cutting everything out. This is my favorite part. It's fascinating to watch everything cut out and do all of the detail work. All right, and then once it's all done, you can press unload and it's going to come right out of your machine and then your design is all cut out and drawn. So to remove it from my card mat, I like to go in here with this little Cricut spatula because it ensures that I'm able to remove it without kind of ruining any of the design. So I'll just go in here and gently place this underneath the design to sort of start getting it lifted off of the card mat. And then once we got most of it up, we can then slowly start peeling with our fingers and remove this all from our card mat. All right, then we'll pull it out of here. And then you can just go in and pop out all the pieces that were cut out. And there's also this little pokey tool which will help remove some of those pieces if they're really small. Okay, and once everything is removed out of the design, here is what it should look like. I think it looks really awesome once it's all cut out. And then cleaning up the card mat is pretty easy. We'll just take this little spatula tool again. And all you need to do is just gently scrape over the top to get rid of all of those little pieces. You don't wanna to scrape too hard because you don't wanna remove any of the adhesive from this mat. So just gently scraping off those little bits will help to remove them from that sticky surface. So once you've gone in there and removed all the extra little pieces, we're going to take that backer sheet and place it right back on top of that card mat to make sure that that stays nice and sticky for the next time you wanna go in and use it. Now the blue insert cards in that card pack didn't quite match this project. So I've decided to create my own card insert. To do this, I've cut down a piece of stark white cardstock to 4.1 inches by 5.3 inches, which is a little bit smaller than the card project. 
and is going to work perfect as a card insert. Now I wanna add a little bit of shine to this project. So I picked out my lunar paste in a couple of different sort of fall colors. I think these tones are going to match the project perfectly and really give off that great fall vibe. And to create my little palette of colors that I want to work on, I found this little non-stick mat that I got off Amazon that's going to work perfectly because it cleans up really nicely once you're done. So I'm starting off with a little bit of raw lunar paste. I'm going to go in with my palette knife from the paste tool set and just apply these colors very thin onto my craft sheet off to the side. You don't need a lot of color. A little bit goes a very long way. And when you apply it nice and thin like this, it's going to work best for the technique. Next, I'll go in using a little bit of Slippery and Wet, which is this really great yellow golden color. I love this one. Then I'll go in using a little bit of Game Over, which is this really nice dark maroon color, really rich kind of red. And last but not least, I'll use a little bit of Refined Copper, which is this great copper tone, and just apply a little bit down to that craft sheet. Then I'm gonna go in with my blending tool with a little sponge on the top. And this sponge applicator is going to be great to apply a thin layer of lunar paste across the cardstock. So I'm just gonna go in and dip into my lightest color first, which is that slippery and wet color. And I'm just going to sort of blend it all over the cardstock in different areas. So we'll apply it to two different areas. Maybe I'll apply a little bit down here as well. There's no real rhyme or reason. You just wanna kind of spread the color nicely across the surface. And the great part about this is because it's so thin, it dries super quickly. So you're able to layer it up if you want to. So if we wanna make this a little bit darker in this area, I'll just dip right back into my color and start layering it up a little bit more. And what I love so much about these pastes is how shiny and metallic these are. They are gorgeous when they dry and they have so much mica in them, they really shine nice and bright. Next, I'll go into the second darkest color, which is this refined copper, and I'll just blend that in several areas next to that yellow color and blend it all over the surface. Okay, that's looking great. Next, let's dip into this great orange color called Roar and we'll just start blending that on. This one is super intense and beautiful. And this orange color totally just screams fall to me. It is so beautiful. And last but not least, we'll dip into a bit of that game over, that gorgeous maroon color, and we'll spread that on to any of the open areas on the card panel. And just make sure to kind of blend and smudge those colors together so that one doesn't stand out too much over the others. And once that background is done, because we applied it so thin, it dries in a matter of minutes. And check out that amazing shine and metallic colors. Each one has kind of a different glow to it, but it is so gorgeous in the end. And I think it's going to be a great backer card for the fall card that we created. Now, if you want something to do with the excess colors here, we can add a little bit of water to them. And then I'm just gonna go in with a piece of cardstock and just kind of start dipping and swiping my cardstock into it. This is a good way to use up that excess color and not let it go to waste and create a nice pretty background or backer card for the next card project you wanna create. And just keep dipping it in until you're satisfied with the color blends. It looks like a complete hot mess right now, but once this dries, all that shine will come back and it will be gorgeous. You can even go in with a heat tool if you want to to help heat set this and dry it a little bit quicker. Here I'm using that Ranger Heated tool, which is nice and quiet, but dries things super fast so we can use this in our next project and not worry about it. Once this is dry, check out the intense, amazing shine that you get. And I love that all the colors show up on black cardstock, so they're all super opaque and are going to give you a gorgeous look even on dark colored cardstocks like this. How cool is that? All right, so now let's put this card together. On the new Cricut card packs that they've been making, they've added a little bit of adhesive on the inside, which is really awesome. This makes it super easy to adhere the insert card and make sure that it's nice and stuck down to the front of your card project. So all you need to do is go in and easily peel off that adhesive backer sheet from the inside of the card. So then all you need to do is slide the insert card right into the corners of your card project. And the corners are nice and cut out, so it's easy to just slide these right in and slide them into the opposite corners as well. And then once you've got all the corners in, you can just easily adhere this down. And that adhesive is really nice because it will keep everything nice and snug and adhered to your insert card. And check that out, I love the colors of the design, and then it has that beautiful mica shine that we created using the different colors of lunar paste on our insert card cardstock. Okay, next I wanna create a customized sentiment for the card. This is really important. I think it's awesome to include the recipient's name on the sentiment, and I love that you can do it with the Cricut with the writing feature. So I'm gonna go in here and choose text, and then I'm going to write out my sentiment. I want it to say, happy birthday, Ale. For this, we're gonna change the operation to draw and using the pen tool. And that makes this more of an outline. 
Then you can go in and choose whatever font that you want. And I ended up choosing this font called Dear John. I think this nice thin writing really matches that great hand-drawn look that's on the card. And I'm going to just size it down so that it's a little bit smaller of a sentiment. I think that should be good, a little over an inch, and then we'll place it in the top corner. Then we'll go in and press make. We'll press on mat, confirm. And for this, I'm going to be using the Cricut Joy Extra Light Grip Mat. So we'll peel off the protective layer. And I'm gonna go in with a piece of white cardstock and place it right down into the corner of that grip mat and stick it down in place. Then we'll press continue. We'll press heavy cardstock. For this, again, we're gonna use the pen tool. So we'll unclamp the blade that's in here and remove it. And I want this to match the other writing on the project. So I'm going to use the 0.4 brown pen and we'll load that right into the tool and clamp it down. And once the mat is all ready, we'll go in and load it right into our Cricut. Once everything is aligned and ready, we'll click go. And now it's going to start writing out our sentiment. And again, this is always the amazing part to me because I could never write this in my own handwriting. So getting to customize your own sentiments using the Cricut Joy Extra is one of my favorite parts. Then we'll click unload. It's going to come right out of our machine. And check out that really great handwritten sentiment that we get that matches the other brown writing on our project. We'll unclamp our pen tool from here and make sure that it's nice and capped off so it doesn't dry out and we'll replace a blade tool for the next time we want to craft. All right, then to remove this from the mat, we're just going to lightly bend it and it will come off the mat nice and easily. And then we can replace the acetate sheet so that it stays nice and dust free and super sticky for the next time we want to use it. And then to finish this sentiment off, I'm just going to go in and fussy cut this out, just leaving a little bit of a white border all the way around the sentiment. It's super easy to do and gives the sentiment a little bit more of a finished look rather than just leaving it on a big rectangle of white cardstock. And it'll also show off more of the card design in the end because there's less white space around the sentiment. That looks great. And then I'm gonna add foam tape onto our sentiment to pop this up off the card and make it a little more 3D. And then I'll add the sentiment a little bit higher than the center on our card. And there is our finished card making project. I love the shine and color that we added on that insert card with the lunar paste. And this design is so much fun with the hand drawn leaves and designs. And then I love that some of the designs cut out to reveal the inside as well. This mushroom and nature and fall theme is perfect for a birthday card for Ale. I think she's going to absolutely love this and I can't wait to give it to her. It's even so cool that the card is completely customized and says her name on the front. And I love this because birthday cards don't just have to be candles and cakes all the time. I think it's so cool that you can theme it to your particular friend or whoever you're giving the cards to interests and it makes it extra special. I can already tell she's going to absolutely love this. All right, for this next card, I have pulled in a craft colored card base. This is kind of a staple for fall and Halloween cards for me. And this is a top folding A2 size card. And I wanna do some 3D embossing with it. So I've pulled out my Simon Hurley and Spellbinders woven 3D embossing folder. We released this during Easter, but this is a great all year round texture and especially is gonna be great for fall card making. So I'll open this right up. And to get the best impression with your 3D embossing folders, I want to spray down the cardstock with some water to make sure that it's nice and moist and it's going to be soft enough to mold to that design without cracking the cardstock. And for this, I only want to emboss a portion of the card instead of doing the whole entire thing. So I'm going to take my card base and place it right down into the 3D embossing folder here, lining it up with the lines of that woven design. And I'll go about right here, a little bit more than halfway up that card. And then I'll close it right where I want it to be on that cardstock. Anything that's inside of that embossing folder is going to 3D emboss. Anything that's outside is not going to get any of the design. Then we'll bring in our platinum die cutting machine. And for the Spellbinders 3D embossing folder, I'm going to put in the A platform base. Then I'm going to place in the embossing folder and cardstock. And then we'll use the D hard gray adapter plate. I'm going to place this down and that's it. And then we'll run this right through our die cutting machine to 3D emboss our cardstock. And check that out. Once you pull this out, it embosses absolutely beautifully. The texture of that 3D embossing folder is just insane how cool it is. It looks like a real basket weave pattern. It's got that kind of wood grain texture in the basket weave and it is so stunning. And I also love the technique that we're able to do to partially emboss the cardstock and not do the whole thing. It's a really great way to add interest to some of your cardstock, but then keep the rest plain and then add kind of a focal point in between where it meets. Now I wanna add a bit more color 
color and texture to this design. So I'm gonna go in with some Gur Simon Hurley Create ink, and I'm just going to swipe this across the surface of that embossed design, and this is going to hit the raised areas and add some color down to it to give it even more depth and dimension. And then I also wanna go in with Weeping Willow, which is even just a little bit darker, and I'm just going to take this color and sort of blend it starting at the bottom of the cardstock and working just a little bit up. Again, this is just adding a little bit more depth and dimension to the cardstock. It's totally not necessary, but it adds some great depth and dimension to this design. And I think that looks really awesome. And then if you wanna sort of bleach some of that color and make it react, I'm gonna go in and spray it down with a little bit of water. And this is gonna give kind of a distressed look to that basket and make sure that, that basket weave doesn't look perfect. So I think it's kind of cool to add a little bit of water there. And once it's nice and dry, you can see those little splatters all over. It just adds a little bit more extra dimension and kind of detail to the background. All right, so for the focal point for this card, I'm gonna use the Happy Fall stamp set. I love this one with the little raccoon standing on the pumpkins, a couple of different pumpkins. You got this little basket of pumpkins and then a truck of some little pumpkins here. So I like to kind of test out what image I wanna use on my card. That truck would be really great across that basket we've designed to kind of cover it up. But that basket design really goes well because it kind of goes along with the basket weave theme. I don't know, I think I'm gonna do this basket just because I think that that really coordinates nicely with the design that we've got going on. And there's a lot of sentiments we can use, but I think I'm gonna use Oh My Gourd because that's just kind of hilarious. And then we'll just go in and stamp out these images using a little bit of Versafine Claire Nocturne ink once again. And I love how it captures all those details and gives us a really great crisp impression. And I'll do the same thing with that sentiment. Now that is a pigment ink, so it takes a little bit longer to dry. So I'll go in with some clear heat embossing powder and throw a layer of that over top of the ink to set it in place. And then I'll heat set this until it's nice and clear and shiny. All right, then I'm gonna take several different colors of Simon Hurley Create inks and just smoosh them down onto my craft sheet. This is going to create a nice palette of color that we can lift from to easily watercolor in our images. And I love that the Simon Hurley Create inks can be used as kind of a palette like this, but extra versatile to color the images right in. Now, whenever I do my watercoloring, I always like to start off with just a layer of water first. This is going to get the stark white cardstock ready to take any of the color, because if you try to just go dry in with the color, it'll sink right into the cardstock. Whereas this will kind of help the color blend and sit more on top of the surface before sinking right in. So it'll give us a much smoother look when blending the colors onto the surface. So I'm starting off with a little bit of Gur, and I'm going to blend this over top. And you can see this is giving a nice even wash of color all across that basket. Now, if we want a darker look, we can go right back into Gur, but use a little bit less water. And that's going to give us a much darker look with the exact same color. And I can just follow some of the lines of this design to create a little bit of shading and depth and dimension on the basket. And then I'll go in using a little bit of Weeping Willow for an even darker color, and I'll add some shading to the edges and bring that color in right from the sides. And then I'll go in starting with Guppy, which is the lighter orange color, and do a wash of that over top of the pumpkins. You can see it's a really nice even layer of color because we add that layer of water down first. And then for some shading and dimension, I'll go in using a little bit of Roar, which is a much darker and richer color, and I'll go in and add that shading and depth all around the pumpkins. All right, and here's a closer look at that image. The color Coloring was super easy to do with those ink pads, and I love how it turned out. And this damn set came up before coordinating dyes existed for my product line, but that's okay. It's pretty easy to go in and just fussy cut this out, especially since this image is a pretty simple shape. I like to leave a little bit of a white border all the way around the image. That way I don't have to be super perfect when I cut it out. And also the white border helps it stand out against darker colored backgrounds. So the white border will really make it pop since we have that dark colored craft background for the background of our card today. All right, and once the image is all cut out, I'm going to adhere it on some foam tape right onto the center of our card. And then I'll adhere down the Oh My Gourd sentiment right below it. And that is just too much fun. So there's a closer look at the finished card. It's quite simple, but I absolutely love the insane texture that we got in that background with the woven 3D embossing folder and doing partial 3D embossing. If you didn't know that you could do that, it's such a cool way to kind of split your card down the center and create a really great textured background while having a nice split area to put the focal point. And finishing it off with that basket image with the pumpkins inside of it from the Happy Fall stamp set was the perfect way to finish off the card and give it the complete fall vibes.
All right, friends, well, I hope you enjoyed that video. It was really fun kind of taking some ideas and crafting some Halloween and fall cards with you. And leave me a comment down below letting me know which card was your favorite. I always love chatting with you guys down there. And also down there, remember, is a full supplies list to everything that I used. And using those links helps support me, so I really appreciate it. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you soon for another card making and crafting video. I'll see you guys next time.